The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to ask questions to make predictions and skim texts and to identify main ideas by reading titles, introductions, first paragraphs and introductory sentences of paragraphs. Hi, have you ever tried to study in bed? You start by sitting upright, really paying attention. Then you think you'd be a bit more comfortable if you lay down. Then you get a bit cold, so you cover yourself with a blanket. And before you know it, you're off in dreamland and no closer to knowing your work. Well, if studying in bed doesn't work, what does? In this lesson, we are going to learn about and practice active reading. Not only will active reading improve your results in English, it is a good study technique for all of your subjects. And if you learn how to read text carefully and with a questioning mind, you'll be developing a life skill that you can apply to reading documents throughout your entire life. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to read a passage using active reading skills, in our previous lesson, we defined active reading. Active reading is careful reading with a questioning mind. While I was waiting to present this lesson, I started looking through this magazine. I looked at some of the pictures, read the headings of some of the articles and scanned through a few of the pages. Reading like that helped me to pass the time. But if I had to answer questions about what I read, I don't think I'd be able to do such a good job because I wasn't paying enough attention. But before we started filming this lesson, I did do some active reading. In order to present this lesson, I read my script slowly and carefully. I underlined key points and came up with a few questions that I wanted to ask the director before we started filming. That was an example of active reading. It was careful questioning reading and it was quite different from reading for pleasure. When you complete a comprehension exercise, it is really important that you read the passage actively, as this will help you to understand it and to be able to find the answers to the questions. To practice our active reading skills, let's take a look at the page of a Sunday Times. We'll begin by surveying the article. Do you remember what we need to look out for? Surveying a text involves looking at and thinking about the source, the title, pictures, captions, bold type, graphs and charts, and topic sentences. So let's try some active reading. We'll begin by examining the heading of a newspaper article. Poison paint in the playpen. Even without reading the article, there is quite a lot that we can work out from the headline. This article is about poisonous paint. And if it is in playpens, which are used by children, then this article must have something to do with children being harmed by paint. Let's have a look at the subheadline to see if it gives us a bit more detail. The Sunday Times conducted a three-month investigation into toxic paint on children's toys. They traced harmful toys on sale around the country back to toy manufacturers and paint companies, which have put the health of the nation's toddlers at risk. Well, I guess was right. This article is definitely going to be about harmful paint on toys that are putting children at risk. Let's also think about the source of this article. It is taken from the Sunday Times, and in this subheadline, we are told that the Sunday Times conducted a three month long investigation into these harmful toys. What clues does the source of the information in the article give us about what to expect from this article? Because the text is a newspaper article, I expect it to contain facts. I also imagine it will have true stories about how paint has harmed children. 
Also, because they did a three-month-long investigation, I expect the article to contain a lot of information and examples, as someone has gone to a lot of trouble to gather information on dangerous toys. To see if these predictions are right, we'll have to read the article. But first, let's take a look at the picture. What clues does the picture give us about what the article is likely to be about? At first glance, it looks like these men are shopping for toys, as it looks like they're about to load these wooden blocks in their trolley. But let's read the caption to make sure. Dangerous playthings. Jacques Gutzer, the Western Cape Area Manager for Toys R Us, and Charles Virgotin, the chain's Belleville store manager, remove painted toys which contain high levels of lead from the store. Okay, so the men aren't shopping after all. In fact, they are packing the blocks into the trolley to remove them from the shop because they have dangerous paint on them. In this case, reading the caption changes how we read the picture. The men aren't customers. They are managers of a toy store and they aren't shopping. They are getting rid of dangerous toys. Now let's look at the other bold type, which is the headline of a related article. Shops haul tainted toys off the shelves. Yes, this confirms what we thought. These articles are going to be about dangerous toys that can no longer be sold in toy shops. Here is another bit of text that stands out. Lead paint alert. The red circle caught my eye. The layout artist must really have wanted readers to pay attention to this and to be aware that lead paint on toys is very dangerous. Let's see how we're doing so far as far as surveying this page of the newspaper goes. We know that the source of the article is the Sunday Times and have thought about what this means. We've looked at the title, we've looked at the picture, and we've read the caption. We read the bold type heading of the accompanying article and the red lead paint alert. And there weren't any graphs or charts in the article. We haven't looked at the topic sentences yet, but I'll put a few of them up on the screen. Shock toy stores and one major chain store have responded to our probe. 398 mallet and ball toys have been sold. The group cannot trace all the customers. Obviously, these sentences are only extracts from the article, but scanning through them gives us more clues about the article. We know that the toy stores are taking the Sunday Times investigation seriously, that some toys we can guess have dangerous paint on them have been sold. We can also guess that these stores are trying to do something about warning customers about the dangerous toys, but that they have no way of knowing who they sold the toys to. From looking at these topic sentences, we are able to make more predictions about the article, and we can also start thinking of questions. I know that before I read the whole article, I'm curious to know what the toy stores plan to do about the painted toys that they have already sold, and how they plan to prevent future problems with dangerous toys. I'd also like to know what made the Sunday Times journalists interested in investigating this. Because I have some questions in my head, when I read the article, I will be reading it far more actively. We aren't going to read the whole article in this lesson, but I hope that you see how surveying an article and reading with an active questioning mind helps you to pay attention and focus on a passage. To give you another opportunity to practice active reading, it is time for today's task. Find a newspaper article that has a picture. Survey the article and write down your predictions about what the article will be about. Write down three questions you hope to be able to answer by reading the article. Read the whole article to see if your predictions were correct and if you can answer your questions. Get into the habit of active reading. It will help you to improve your understanding, boost your memory and increase your marks. Till next time, goodbye.